Hi everyone, welcome to another Solar Fall Baits paint video tutorials. In this one we're going to be painting a bluegill pattern and a fairly complicated one at that. So let's just jump right in and start painting. And the first paint uh, going in is going to be this um, kind of a um, flaky uh, blue pattern. And uh, that's going to be our background color. And I'm going to be leaving um, quite a bit of the wood grain still showing on this uh, swim bait. And I personally really love that look. So figured I would just leave it in for this one as well. Once I was done with this really deep blue, I wasn't really 100% happy with how it looked and I really wanted to pop a little bit more. So I just added this uh, cosmic uh, sparkle blue into the mix as well and uh, I think I did the right choice. Usually when I clear coat my lures, I usually have this kind of a uh, contraption uh, set up uh, linking the two halves together sometimes several of them and that needs to go uh, in order for me to make this paint job look a little bit more cohesive so the plan is to fit these two halves together and I still have uh, quite a bit of sprue left from the clear coat and taking out those screw eyes so that needs to go out too so I still need to make sure that these two halves are actually kind of um, lining up properly so that uh, the paint job that I'm going to be doing is going to be looking a lot more cohesive. So in order for me to do that, I'm just going to tape the two halves together with some electric tape. All right, so next I'm going to start painting the scales and I found that the best way to get realistic looking scales, um, well, relatively realistic looking scales with a mesh is to stretch the mesh slightly and have a piece of plywood behind the lure and I will then just fasten that um, piece of um, mesh uh, to that piece of plywood with some uh, curtain snips and that way it's much more easier for you to control the um, alignment of the scales so that they will actually be more vertical if that makes sense. And um, yeah, of course you can wrap the lure with uh, mesh, but I found that uh, the, the look, especially if you have a really round lure, it's gonna look a little goofy. Oh, and about the mesh itself that I use here, it's actually from a laundry bag and it's made of fabric, which actually works in our advantage because it's slightly thicker. So when I go and shade the scales a little bit later on, you'll see that the, uh, effect is a lot more um, visible. The main color for these uh, scales is going to be this gold color from Vallejo. It's a Vallejo metallic uh, line. They do have other uh, types as well but I really like this one because it's very opaque and it's a little bit more shifting towards silver um, but of course it does have that um, gold uh, flake in it as well. So it's a little bit more muted type of color I think. When I was looking at the end result of the scale painting, I, I thought, you know what, this is a little bit too muted for my taste. Let me just add another color to it. But I didn't want to go with full on gold. So instead I went th with this uh, yellow kind of iridescent um, flake color from uh, Mission Models. And I think that was a really good choice because it uh, definitely complements the scales a lot more and makes them pop. Shading the scales can be kind of intimidating, especially if you've never done this before. So in order for me to make this easy for myself and for you guys, of course, I start with this much more lighter shade of green and I will then gradually go up in intensity. And um, 
yeah, how much do you spray in the beginning? So what I usually do is I kind of divide the part that I have the scales into, let's say, three pieces. I will start a little bit above the uh, scale line so that um, the scales that I have in the bottom will actually not have any of this shading uh, effect on them. I kind of like that look and uh, yeah, that's what I'm going for here. But yeah, like I said, the shift from different tones is going to be a gradual one here. So next I'm going to go with this um, uh, olive green and that will be slightly on top of the um, grass green color that I just sprayed on. And this is going to be a little bit more aggressive um, type of um, shading here, meaning that I will spray a lot more of the paint into the scales. And also here you can see pretty clearly of what type of angle you want to spray it on. It's fairly aggressive because the uh, back side of the scale, you don't want any paint there, right? Because that's what we're trying to highlight. And the last color going in is going to be this Magnolia Brown. And I was actually debating on putting on a much darker shade of green here. But then I figured, you know what, actually a lot of bluegills do have this kind of almost black scales when you go um, further up uh, towards their backs. So I think this will actually look pretty good here. Time for a scale reveal. And as you can see here, while I peel this um, uh, mesh off, the gradual shift of different colors really does make the scales pop up in a positive way. I went ahead and painted both sides of the lure now uh, with the scales and it's time to paint the belly and of course it's going to be white. and. Um, the type of white that I use here is actually a surface primer, which is a really opaque type of uh, white because I want to make sure that all of those weight holes will be completely covered with this white paint. I wanted to add some pizzazz on the belly and jazz it up a little bit with this uh, pearl white to make it uh, really stand out. And actually now that I'm like in the process of editing this video, I think it would have been a pretty cool idea to actually do the same scale effect on the belly portion, but uh, yeah, you know, there's always next time. A bluegill pattern wouldn't be a bluegill pattern without ba the bars. Yes, it, it needs the bars. So that's what we're painting on next. And I'm just going to be using this um, black uh, in order to kind of highlight the edges of the stencil that I've placed here. And uh, we will then actually highlight them a little bit more later on. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Looking at photos of bluegill online, I've noticed that they do usually have this kind of a, a purple sheen to them. So that's what I wanted to add on mine as well. So depending on the angle that you're looking at the lure, it'll be either black or purple. I think that'll look really cool here. Hey, you know what time is it? It's time for a bar reveal. So with this blue gill pattern, I wanted to have this kind of a flared out gill or kind of like a maybe blood trail look to the gill area. 
So in order for me to do that with this orange, I'm going to actually use a stencil to um, kind of mark out where those parts are going to be. And then I'm going to be just freehanding the rest. Next, I'm going to start building up the head details. And of course, for that, I need a background color. And what else color best to suit the job other than black? All right, so the main color for the head details is going to be this uh, gold chrome, um, which I could have used for the um, the scales, but you know what? It is what it is. I just kind of forgot that I even had this. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to be using this to do the head details. And I'm going to be... Uh, I've already actually done the mouth, which I did film, but uh, it was terribly blurry and out of focus so I didn't add that into this part but I'm going to be showing the rest of the whole process here how to uh, do that and of course this is actually the stencil that I used for this, that uh, MDF um, bluegill bait that I made uh, just uh, maybe half a year ago yeah something like that and uh, all of the um, stencils are basically from that project. Usually for a lot of these um, metallic paints, you want to have the background completely black. So I'm actually going to fill out this um, gill area uh, beside the um, pectoral fin with this black first, and then I will just go ahead and spray over that with, um, with the gold. And I'm actually doing this in a way that the black is going to be going on uh, a different angle than the um, the gold one because that will actually kind of highlight the edge of the of the gill a lot more. And I actually think I've seen Marlin Bates doing this, and I really like the look. And uh, yeah, just wanted to try it on this, and it pretty much looks pretty awesome. All right, here's something that I don't think I've ever shown on my channel before, which is how to paint the mouth in full details and actually have it go around the head of the lure. So in order for me to do that, I'm just going to mask certain areas here to make it appear that it uh, this lure actually has a mouth. So I usually always use electrical tape for this because it's flexible and it can go around um, curved surfaces a lot better than normal masking tape. All right, so let's paint that slight thin sliver that uh, connects the two uh, mouthpieces together. And you kind of have to be careful with this. Um, you don't want any overspray. That's why I've used the uh, green uh, tape here to make sure that uh, I won't get any overspray. The jaw part of the mouth is going to be pretty much exactly the same as I did on the upper part of the mouth. I just wanted to include that here too because, you know, why not? I've never shown it before, so I'm sure that somebody's gonna ask me if I don't include it in the video. So here you go, you're welcome. Right, let's start shading some of the areas around the head here now. And I'm just going to use this uh, medium uh, olive green. And because, you know, I've already used it here, so it will kind of blend in nicely, I think. 
And of course, you have to be pretty careful when you are spraying these really small little areas. Um, I think it might be a good idea to actually clear coat uh, your lure um, in between uh, different stages, but I'm pretty much uh, already comfortable in doing this in one go without having any layers. So yeah, there's that. So, a blue gill wouldn't be a blue gill if it didn't have any blue in its gills. So, that's what we're adding next. And it's really easy to go a little bit too overboard with the blue, especially if it's a very vibrant type of blue that uh, I personally have. And uh, I'm just going to actually thin it down just slightly to make sure that I won't go overboard with the blue. When I was looking at the gill plate area, I felt, you know what, there's something missing. And I remembered I have that color shift purple paint and I figured, you know what, I'm just going to add a little bit of that here because I felt like it needed it. You know, sometimes you just have that feeling that you kind of are missing something. So we still need to paint the fins. So the next color going in is going to be this yellow, which is not really super bright. It's not really mustard yellow or anything like that, but it's a little bit more of a drab version of yellow. And I think that will be perfect for as background color. For the fin rays, I was thinking maybe I should uh, just use black like I always do. But then I remembered that I have that magnolia brown, which is fairly dark as it is, but not black. So I decided to use that to uh, paint the fin rays. So there's one more little detail that I still need to add to my bluegill pattern to make it complete. And that is to add that little dot that you have on the uh, gill plate area. So I'm sure you guys remember the uh, electric tape that I put on to the top and the bottom of the bait to make it uh, one solid piece so it would be consistent when I paint the lure. So now I need to take those off and go over those. And first I'm gonna go over the top with this olive green. And once that was done I moved on to the belly and finished that off with some white and pearlescent white. So originally I actually wasn't going to add this uh, portion of the painting into the video itself, but consider this as a bonus content where I paint the eyes. So um, I'm using the Vallejo metallic gold mixed with the um, Mission Models uh, iridescent yellow and that will give me a nice uh, mixture for the base of the eye. So it's not super visible here, but um, the eye material that I'm using here is actually a silver metallic uh, vinyl that I just punch out these eyes. Alrighty, so now that I have a good base, I'm gonna actually start spraying around the eye. But I gotta be very careful, so that's the reason why I'm actually using the um, um, trigger control button in the back here, or the uh, screw to make sure that I don't go too far out and uh, mess everything up.
the way that I'm actually laying down the paint around the eye is doing these kind of um, quick passes and try not to go too much over the edge of the eye so that I have this kind of a nice gradient effect. A lot of people would actually start painting the eye and the iris at this point, but I usually always like to um, mix up some epoxy and make this kind of an eye dome, because I kind of like how it looks. And the way that I usually try to mix the epoxy is to make sure that I don't introduce too much bubbles into it. So the movements that I do here is very small and um, methodical. Once I'm sure that the epoxy has mixed enough, I'm going to make these kind of small balls uh, with a stick, metallic stick usually, um, and then I'm just going to try to uh, lay it down very carefully so I don't introduce any more bubbles into the epoxy. Once I have all the domes done, I'm gonna go past over them with a heat gun and try to make sure that all of the bubbles that might be still in there will rise to the surface and burst. I've let the uh, epoxy to cure roughly 24 hours after applying it, and now it's time to paint the iris. And uh, usually what I do is I'll just place a stencil that I've made specifically for this purpose and it's just a matter of trying not to overspray. So I usually just go very lightly and just build up the color that way. Alright, so now that the iris is done, I'm gonna move on to the pupil, and of course, since I have this see-through plastic as a stencil material, it'll be much more easier for me to see uh, and align everything perfectly so that the pupil will be smack in the middle of the iris. So there you have it guys, a pretty cool looking uh, bluegill pattern even if I say so myself. So I'm just gonna leave you guys with a couple of shots of um, the paint jobs that I did for this um, paint session because I was painting a whole bunch of these at the same time. So if you like any of these they will be available in my web shop. So yeah hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys on the next one and um, yeah I don't know what's gonna be on the next video i have a couple of good ideas what i might want to go for but uh, yeah like always you never know what's gonna be next